Today everyone, I'm Dave, and today we're going to be making custom cookie cutters. Not the regular thin kind that you just crush with no problem, but our heavy duty, indestructible cookie cutters. The first thing we're going to need to make these cookie cutters is some metal. In this case, we're just using aluminum, makes it a little easier to bend. And of course you can get it in various thicknesses. Instead of the very thin metal that a lot of cookie cutters are made out of, which are only about 30 gauge, we're upping it to a thicker metal, 22 gauge aluminum. So once we make our cookie cutters, rather than trying to weld them together, what we're going to do is use a slight variation on aluminum pop rivets. To build these cookie cutters, we'll be using some tin snips, a pair of ice grips, a ball peen hammer, a file to remove all the sharp edges, a pair of tin snips, a pair of sheet metal pliers for bending our aluminum, a drill to help us with the riveting, and if you want to bring your cookie cutters to the next level, we can add some fancy edging to the outside, and a vise to hold everything in place while we do our work, and of course, can't forget our safety gear. The first thing we're going to need for making our cookie cutters is some templates. We can just go online and find some of our favorite shapes. Once we have our pattern, we can take a piece of aluminum that we're going to use, and we can actually start laying it on here, and moving their pattern as we go across to make sure we have enough aluminum or we can take our soft measuring tape and actually measure each side going all the way around adding an extra half an inch for an overlap at the very end to figure out how much aluminum so our first bend will be right here at the tip we can just lay the metal down and just mark that now for our star of course it's going to be the same over and over and over what we're actually going to do is I'm actually just using a scrap piece of aluminum just to score it. I'll put my square onto it and score down the edge. We're just going to put our metal bender, clamp it right on that line and bend our metal up. We can actually just use the table as our bend and once we get it started we can go back to our template. We'll just repeat the same process again. Mark it, use a sharp piece of metal, score. We're now marked for our next bend. Again, we'll just start it from this bending it by hand. And we'll go back to our template, then just repeat the process again and again. And we're good to go. Set aside about half an inch, same as before. Mark, draw all the way across. Our tin snips, cut that across on the line. We'll use our vice grips that we have and just pinch one half. Again, double checking that everything is sitting nice and flat. Now that we're ready to actually drill our holes for our rivets, what we're gonna do is actually just lock this right into a vise to hold it steady and to keep our hands from being behind by accident. We'll get our drill, we'll match our bit to the rivets that we're using, in this case they're 1 8 and we'll just drill through both pieces of metal. We'll put our first rivet in, just sitting there for now. Unlock our pliers to get them out of the way. Lock them on the other side. When we drill this hole, we have to take into account if we're going to put any edging and leave enough space so that we can get past the edging with the hole. So we'll just go slightly below. And same as before, we'll just put our rivet in there temporarily just to hold everything in place. So now that we have that ready, clamp it again just to hold everything in place. Remove one of the pop rivets. Take our rivet that we spun around. The reason we did the spinning is if I try taking this and poking from underneath, it's gonna be very difficult. By spinning it, I now have that shaft. I can poke through the hole first. I can grab on the top side to help me line everything up and pull that rivet right through and then just remove the pin when we're done. Now we got our two rivets reversed and ready for the next stage. We're gonna now use our vise as a bit of an anvil and we're gonna go old school. This is where our ball peen hammer comes into play. And what we're gonna do is just tap those and start mushrooming the outside of that rivet out. We're gonna flip this, do the same thing with the other mushroom, head out. 
Once we have what looks like a nice even mushroom all the way around, we can then flip the hammer around and bring it all the way down. Until it almost makes full contact, switching back to the ball pin to finally set the rivet. Now that we got both rivets mushroomed down, the only thing left now to do is put our edging on or food safe tubing, which we can slice down the middle and wrap around our edge. We're gonna take even a heavier duty edging and follow the same process, starting in one corner and working our way all the way around. Once we're back to the start, it's just a matter of using our cutters. Then we can just cover up that overlap a little bit and we finish our cookie cutter. So now that we showed you how to make your cookie cutters, we went ahead, made a few more, including our bolt, and of course, the e-replacement wrench. The only thing left now is to put them to good use and start making ourselves some cookies. For more tips, tricks, tools, and teardowns, please check out our other videos. And don't forget to subscribe.